So now we're going to look at the story of an adult with fetal alcohol syndrome, uh, travels in circles, and we'll come back and ask questions after that. Today, I'm going to tell you a story of a puffin known as travels in circles. At first glance, travels in circles didn't appear to be much different than the other young adults in the puffin colony. His black and white feathers were as shiny as the other puffins, but a bit more unkept at times. As a young puffin, travels in circles was clumsy. He waddled when he walked and frequently fell over. The other birds often teased and chased him. Although he was fully grown, travels in circles still had not quite grasped the fundamentals of grooming, building a nest, or having a mate. Even though he was an adult, he still lived with his mother and father. Despite his flaws, Travels in Circles was a cheery bird who loved to spend his time playing with pebbles on the beach. His parents loved him very much and continued to care for their adult son. When other parents criticized or questioned them about this, Mother Puffin would simply smile and reply. He is a gift the Creator gave to us for our old age. Deep down, however, mother and father Puffin were very concerned. They wondered why their son was so absent-minded and why he was so unable to successfully perform even the simplest task, such as building a proper nest. Even with instruction, travels in circles nests were never completed. He would lose track of what he was doing, becoming entranced by patterns in the rock instead of a nest he would end up constructing a star, a large circle, or an elaborate maze, whistling and chirping happily as he worked. It was apparent to all that travels in circles behavior was certainly different than other adult puffins. What allowed him a measure of acceptance in the colony, however, was that he was fantastic at catching fish. And he was generous to a fault in sharing them, be it friend or foe. Travels in Circles was oblivious, fearless, and awkward. It was only through the grace of the Creator that he had survived chickhood. Our son is certainly an odd and clumsy bird. I wonder what goes on in his mind. Although he's different, he really does seem to enjoy life. I think, however, that he gets lonely. After all, his brothers and sisters and cousins all have mates and chicks, but he doesn't. He knows that he should take on adult responsibilities, but he never seems to get started. That's because he's not organized, and it appears that he has no real goals. I worry about who will take care of him when we are gone. Fortunately, for his sake, he is one of the best fish catchers in the colony. Because he shares with everyone, most of the colony members accept him and watch out for him. I've noticed that even those our sons should fear don't bother him. Maybe they sense our Creator sent him for a special purpose. Still, I wonder what caused our son to have such different behavior. I've thought about the season of our son's birth. The only unusual event of that season was the crate of cans and balls that washed ashore. Remember? Hmm. Yes. I do recall the balls that exploded after being in the sun. They had that odd-tasting, bubbly water in them. Yes, the odd water that made us dizzy and sick and caused us to run around in circles, just like our beloved son does. Have I ever told you what Orca said about that crate? She and Dolphin frequently eavesdrop on the humans who ride those large cruise ships. She said that the funny water is champagne and it contains alcohol. It is the alcohol that made us walk strangely and fall down. Hey, Travels in Circles walks funny, and as a chick he often fell. Do you think it was the alcohol that caused his problem? Oh, I don't know. I just hope the Creator grants us a long life so we can watch over our precious son. Alas, Mother Puffin did not get her wish. The winter was long and cold, and many older puffins did not survive. Travels in circles, parents were among those who perished. 
Finding his loving parents clasped in each other's wings under the shimmering glow of the northern lights, the young puffin gently covered them with rocks, crying silent tears as he worked. As he placed the last rock upon their grave, he whispered, Farewell, my dear parents. What will I do now, grandfather? The winter is so cold and dark. What should I do? Lonely, sad, and scared travels in circles waddled down to where the frozen sea met the rocks. He could hear the ice crack and groan as it shifted. He could see beluga, orca, and seal swimming under the ice. Then, as if in concert, they rose up out of the sea to catch a breath of cold Arctic air. As the large mammals slipped back under the water and headed south, travels in circles dove into the cold, dark sea after them. It was not the first time he had acted impulsively. It seemed to travels in circles that this was the start of a grand adventure and he gave no thought to the consequences of his behavior. The puffin followed the sea mammals until he lost sight of them when he became distracted by a school of herring swimming by. Travels in circles caught one and brought it to the surface intending to take it to the shore. Only then did he realize he could no longer see the shore, only huge islands of ice. Travels in circles pulled himself up onto one of the pieces of ice floating by. I guess I'd just eat my fish and take a nap here. I'll look for home later. He repeated his napping, diving, fishing, and eating routine many times. One day when he returned to the surface to rest, he noticed the land looked different. Gone were the familiar cliff and beach, and after floating for so many days, the puffin noticed that his familiar ice flow was nearly gone too. As travels and circles rode his melting ice flow south, he thought of his mother and father, his home, and the pebbles he was so fond of. Once in a while, dolphin, beluga, and orca visited him. After they left, he realized he forgot to ask them if they knew where he was or how he could get home. One morning, Puffin awoke to a big surprise. His ice flow had completely melted and he was now swimming in the warmest water he had ever felt. Squawking loudly in alarm, Travels in circles turned to see that he was eye to eye with a very strange creature. The puffin tried swimming away from the creature, but his body did not seem to move. The creature had a big round head, two eyes, and many dangling arms. <laughs> Calm down, little bird. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm Dutch an octopus out for my morning swim, looking for a bite to eat. I'm hungry too. Please, may I swim with you? Why, yes, of course. Stay close and follow me. The puffin followed the octopus towards the shore. But as often was the case, Travels in Circles forgot what he was doing. Distracted by a shiny, silvery object, streaming bubbles, swimming after it, the puffin was oblivious to octopus's cries of caution. But, but, but wait, wait. Travels in Circles followed the bright shape until it stopped by an odd-looking boulder. He swam over and hopped on top of it. What he saw was astounding. Many noisy metal containers with humans inside sped by on the cliff above. The only thing the puffin found familiar was the smell of food. He recognized the odor of fish. Excitedly, he started off in search of a meal. With one fearless dash, he crossed the busy street oblivious to the yelling people and loud sounds as he waddled past. Frantically scurrying around giant human feet, the bird followed the scent of fish. Before him was a banquet. Big fish, little fish, crabs, clams, oysters, and mussels. His stomach growled with anticipation. Waddling as fast as he could, travels in circles made his way toward the feast. Just as he lunged for a scrumptious-looking fish, he was grabbed from behind by a human hand. <laughs> Hold still, little bird. I've been trying to get you since I saw you down by the ferry dock. Whatever are you doing down here in a big city, hundreds of miles from where you belong? <laughs> 
Travels in circles squeezed his eyes tightly shut. He was faint with fear as he felt his heart beating so quickly he thought it would leap right out of his chest. He had heard of tales of humans taking puffins away to unknown fates. Now, here he was, captured, far away from home and in the hands of a human. Don't worry, little one. There's a place right below here where I'll take you. There you can get all the fish you want, and you won't be robbing a fish seller's blind. <laughs> the big warm hands placed the puffin in a box. Travels in circles kept his eyes closed, squeezing them even tighter as the box started moving. After what seemed like forever, he heard a door bang and the sound of another voice. This voice was light and sweet, that of a young woman. Good morning, Sam. What have you got for me today? You'll never guess. Look. The lid of the box flew open. Travels in circles opened his eyes and looked up to see two sets of eyes looking back at him. Oh my goodness, Sam, a puffin. Wherever did you find him? He looks so scared. Don't worry, little bird. We'll take good care of you here at the aquarium. Thanks, Gina. I knew you'd help. I caught him down by the market just as he was getting ready to help himself to some fish at Peter's stall. Good thing I got him first. <laughs> <laughs> Travels in circles heard the laughter but was too scared to see any humor in his situation. Okay, little guy. Let's get you in with the penguins. I hope you don't take escape lessons from those renegades. The lid on the box closed again. When it reopened, Travels and Circles found himself in an enclosure with rocks and fish and a group of very large birds. The largest came up to him. Hey there, buddy. What'd they snag you for? We're the Doolin boys and we're planning to split out of here today and you look like a likely fella to join us. But I just got here. What is this place? Won't the Sam get me if I leave? <laughs> That's a good one. We Doolin boys, we don't care. We're busting out in a few, so uh, mate, stay close. Hey, you guys, duck. Here comes the jailer. Stay close to the door and when I give the signal, everybody out. The smallest penguin signaled and the two other penguins grabbed the puffin and ran out the door. All right, boys, let's make a break for it. All right, here we go. Let's go. Hey, you guys, get back here. Gina, penguins are in again. They're heading towards the bay. Quick, call animal control. Within minutes, the three penguins and travels in circles were in the bay. The Doolin brothers laughed as they swam north. Travels in circles could barely keep up. Look, buddy, we got you out. Now you owe us. Travels in circles was very frightened. He had always wanted friends, but this was not what he had in mind. He wished now that his mother and father were around to tell him what was the right or wrong thing to do. What do you want me to do? You stand guard while we check out the boat. It's what we do for a living. Come on, boys. Let's go. The penguins climbed up onto the boat while travels and circles kept watch. The hungry puffin became distracted from his assignment, however, and dove down to catch a salmon. When he returned to the surface, he saw the three penguins being chased off the boat and into a net held by the aquarium's keeper. Well, having friends like that wasn't much fun. Now I guess I'd better go home. But which way do I go? I don't know where home is. Oh, no. The puffin cried as he swam in circles. A sea lion watching the confused bird ate a salmon, burped politely behind one flipper, and then swam over to where Travels and Circles was now struggling to pull himself onto the shore. Son, what are you doing here? Travels and Circles told the sea lion the entire story of how he had gotten lost, caught, escaped, and now lost again. The sea lion listened closely to the puffin's tale. When the bird had finished, sea lion grunted, nodded, and looked up into the tree overhead. Aha! Uh -huh. There you are. I thought I heard you. Well, come on, make yourself seen. A tiny black bat fluttered down from the tree and landed in front of them. Hello, sea lion. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but, well, I was just hanging around. I think I know of a way we can help our lost friend. I know of a healer who lives deep in the forest. And if you'll help me... 
Together we can help our new friend get to a safe place. Of course I'll help. Let's go now while it's dark. It's a much safer time for travel. Lead on, little bat. Sliding back into the water, sea lion and travels in circles followed bat. They swam up a canal into a series of lakes and out of the city until they reached a small stream. Sizing up the situation, the sea lion said, Travels in circles, I'm too big to go up that stream. You must continue your journey with Bat. I'll ask Grandfather, our creator, to watch over you. Now go, safely. But what do I do if I get hungry? Look into the water. There's fish in the stream. My goodness, look at them all. I never noticed. With that, the gentle sea lion turned and swam away. After snacking, the puffin and the bat started again on their journey. It wasn't long until they spotted a glowing light through the trees and heard the sound of wings beating overhead. Indeed, Eagle had heard the prayers sea lion had sent and had come to greet the bird and the bat. As the odd trio traveled toward the healing circle, the glow grew brighter. When they reached the light of the healing circle, Coyote, who stood at the north of the circle, smiled and thanked the unselfish bat and gestured for travels and circles to join him. Welcome, dear Puffin. We have heard of your long journey from the north. Salmon, Orca, and others now sing songs of your journey. We know of the loss of your parents and of their concerns for you. We know why life has been hard for you. Come, come and meet Dr. Raven. He and his helpers are waiting. As Coyote escorted Travels in Circles over to the group, Dr. Raven greeted them. Please sit, dear Puffin. We're glad you came. I am here to tell you of the time before you were born, of the alcohol your mother drank, and how, unknown to her, your father or you, the alcohol affected your brain. Tonight, I will have my helpers come to meet you, talk with you, and teach you. We will help you make a plan for your life. Dr. Raven and his team weighed and measured the puffin. They evaluated his language, reading, spelling, and math skills, and assessed his daily living skills. After several hours, Dr. Raven and the team members sat down with Travels in Circles to discuss what they had learned. The puffin, as had previously been believed, was affected by fetal alcohol syndrome. When he was told of his diagnosis, travels in circles seemed relieved. I have wondered all my life what was wrong with me. Now I know that these problems are not my fault. Now I don't have to feel so bad. Thank you for all your help. You are welcome. Now I would like to introduce you to Misty Woodpecker. She will show you to your new home. Misty's family has offered to help you get started. Please, go to your new home with the woodpeckers. All of us here in the forest will help you have a healthy, happy life. Don't worry. We here in the forest now think of you as one of us. We'll help you. Why not come to school with me tomorrow? Maybe you can help me teach the little ones how to read, spell, and do math. I am so ashamed. I never learned to read and do math. Well, I can count, but school was hard. Everyone laughed at me, so I quit going and spent my time on the beach making pebble pictures instead. Oh, and catching fish. Misty, could I catch you a fish or make you a picture, and in exchange, you could try teaching me to read? I think that's a wonderful plan. Let's talk about it more tomorrow. Misty said goodbye and flew to her home high in a snag. The sun was high in the sky next morning when Misty returned to take travels in circles to school. The woodpecker led the puffin to the clearing where Deer was holding class. Travels in circles felt embarrassed until Misty pointed out other adult students. What are they doing here? They are animals with learning problems. Some of their difficulties were caused by their mother's drinking before birth, just as yours were. Some of these folks have other problems. The puffin was shown to his desk. Lessons began. The day raced by. When Travels and Circles asked a question, no one laughed. Instead, he got helpful answers. As the days and weeks passed, 
His tutors helped him make up a schedule as to when to get up, chores he had to do, when to go to bed, and other aspects of his daily life. Soon, travels and circles began to understand what letters and numbers meant. He and Misty spent more time together. Misty helped him learn the difference between having a friend that cares rather than being taken advantage of like the Penguin brothers had done. Despite missing his parents and the other Puffins, even the ones who teased him, Travels in Circles was happy to be in his new home. The Woodpecker family made him feel loved. Travels in Circles also learned that he had valuable gifts to offer. With his artistic talents, he taught animals how to use pebble pictures to communicate. All in all, through the structure and support given to him by his adopted family and new friends, life was very good for Travels in Circles. Still, one important part was missing. Oh, Grandfather, our Creator, give me the courage to tell Misty how I feel. Hello, my friend. I have not talked to you since you first arrived but I have watched your progress with interest, pride, and joy. You fear that because you have fetal alcohol syndrome, you won't be smart enough for someone to love. Nonsense. True love is from the heart and the soul. Misty Woodpecker knows of your heart and soul. She knows of your gentleness. Surely a young puffin who can sail hundreds of miles, feed himself, survive the journey to our healing circle, and learn to read, well, Surely that is a bird with strength and courage. Tell her of your heart. Let nature do the rest. Good night now. Remember my words. Early next day, Misty returned to take Travels and Circles to school. Padding his wings with hers, Travels and Circles smiled at Misty Woodpecker. Misty looked into Travels and Circles' eyes and then down at the ground. There on the ground was a pebble picture of her surrounded by the words, I love you, Misty Woodpecker. Will you marry me? Misty was very silent for a few moments. She thought of the years ahead, of how she would most likely be the one to provide the guidance and structure, the one to take care of the finances, the one who would be doing the planning. She thought of his kindness, his courage, and of how hard he tried. She thought of his parents and how deeply they must have loved him. Finally, she thought of his heart and soul, not of his brain that she knew was damaged by alcohol. Misty thought of all the gifts the special one had brought into her life, and of more gifts to come. A smile appeared on her face. Yes, my dear Travels in Circles, I will marry you. And so it came to pass. The years went by, some good, some hard. Much of what Misty had foreseen was true, yet through it all, she would thank the Creator for the special gift of her mate, for he taught her about love, patience, and how every creature on this beautiful earth had a purpose. And so it is, with all of those born with fetal alcohol syndrome and fetal alcohol-related conditions, throughout their lives, our communities must offer these special souls structure, love, hope, and the same road to happiness we all seek. Just like Travels in Circles, you know, in this video, is lucky enough in love to meet Misty Woodpecker. That's, you know, the same luck, I believe, that my biological daughter had in meeting, you know, her um, current husband, her one and only husband, and the father of her two children. And that supportive, um, you know, person within their life is oftentimes one of the most important protective factors mm -hmm. for our adults, I think, that are affected by fetal alcohol syndrome. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's a joke in our house, but, you know, I've got seven more of these wonderful children that I need to play role model, or not role model, I need to play matchmaker for and start looking for other potential partners <laughs> for my kids as caregivers. And they'll be lucky people. And they'll be lucky people, yeah. you bet. <laughs> Did you have a question? So at what age? Do the kids, or they, that, that turn the adults, finally outgrow the effects of the syndrome so that they no longer need supports built in around them? Well, you know, I have 
13 children, eight of which have fetal alcohol syndrome or related conditions, and those children range in age from 3 to 30. They range from IQs of 110 down to IQs of 64. And all of those children are going to need cradle to grave services. They will all need throughout their lives some form of support and intervention in order to make themselves successful and you know to be able to operate in this world. I hear all the time from professionals, from teachers, from other individuals, social workers who say, you know, but Julie, you need to be preparing your children for the real world. And I challenge them back because I happen to think that for my children I need to prepare a specific um, section of the real world for my children and in that will be more successful. Did you have a comment? Yes, I work with the Alcohol Drug Helpline and wanted just to say that we get a lot of calls from folks. Um, we're an information referral center to send people to resources around treatment and recovery and housing and those kinds of things. We had a number of calls from folks looking for services. Um, for example, pregnant women may be looking for treatment. Folks that have probably undiagnosed fetal alcohol syndrome or fetal alcohol related effect looking for somewhere to go resources to help them out. And so just wanted to let you guys know that's out there. You know, it's good to hear that there's growing awareness of fetal alcohol syndrome. And Julie, you and I know we could sit here for hours and talk about any number of issues relating to fetal alcohol syndrome. But I hope what's, what, what has happened here in the audience tonight and for you out at home is that you have started your own journey through the healing circle. And the pathway to healing begins with awareness, education, which I hope you've gotten here tonight and that you pass on to others, understanding, acceptance, and forgiveness. And most importantly, we need to understand that it's going to take each one of us to be responsible for the next generation of healthy children. And as Coyote says, these beautiful spirits are here to teach us about love, respect, and patience. And we need to remember to have joy and humor, especially humor. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Yes, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn and Julie, for sharing with us about our special ones. If you'd like more information about fetal alcohol syndrome or more information about obtaining this series, you may find that information at the Foster Parent Training website. And for our Canadian viewers, it is available by way of the British Columbia Aboriginal Disabilities Network website. If you are having a problem with alcohol and other drugs, help is available 24 hours a day at the Alcohol Drug Helpline at 1-800-562-1240. And please remember, if there is the slightest possibility that you might be pregnant, please do not use alcohol and other drugs. Thank you. Mm -hmm.